Not all that long ago, tribes of the First Nations across the plains regions of the United States used mats made out of cattails and bulrush to protect their homes from the elements of the harsh winters. Those homes, called wickiups, were large dome-shaped domiciles with cattail mats wrapped around the walls and the roof of the structure. When it snowed or rained, the reeds of the cattails would swell and insulate the home from the cold. The practice of cattail weaving has been largely forgotten about in modern times. Homes now have siding and insulation and roofs that keep families warm. Recently, a group of Meskwaki women got together and decided to bring back the practice. It was part of their history, after all, and while their ancestors stitched reeds together out of necessity, they would do it to honor the past. This started probably about, I want to say 10, but I think it's longer than that, through a series of coincidence with uh, workshops we were having at the Tribal Museum and just uh, interest that um, another group of ladies had in revitalizing the cattail mat weaving. Um, they were, they met up with uh, a lady from Oklahoma and uh, she was Kickapoo and she was talking about uh, their traditional cattail mat weaving and um, that triggered an interest here. It had been forgotten here for at least, I want to say 60 years, because of um, women going into the workforce and people moving into uh, frame houses. Um, there wasn't the need to make the cattail mats and build the traditional wikiups. This is really part of what being Meskwaki is. This type of work, you know, this is what kept our people alive. Cattail mat weaving uses reeds harvested from cattail and bulrush plants. The plants are found mostly in marshes. It takes several hundred reeds to wrap around a wikiup. It can be time consuming to stitch them all together, but the group shows up each Wednesday to make progress on their mat, one stitch at a time. They run twine through the center of each individual reed using a needle made out of buffalo ribs. Before they make their first stitch, the group honors their ancestors and the traditions. We just don't go out and cut cattails and bring them in and you know, even the things we don't use, we gather them up and we place them in the river when we're done. We don't throw them in the trash. You know, everything is treated with respect. I think that's important that we pass that and those teachings and that belief system down to our younger people because they have to have that respect too. It is the hope of the group that the younger generations of Meskwakis will become interested in learning how to make cattail mats and carry on the tradition. I'd like to see younger ladies coming out and participating and my granddaughters. I'd like for them to be active and in every facet of the process. 